Well, after much sanding, we are uh, ready to do the refinishing now. So, I have, uh, first off, you can see the crack there. Um, it is not going to be invisible, as I said at the beginning, but it is completely smooth and completely filled. So there's no concerns at all about this, this crack now. Uh, this pipe should smoke just fine for many, many years to come. Uh, the extra chin has been removed here, and it feels much more reasonable. And the stem now fits quite nicely. I've stripped the wax off with alcohol, and then I've done a light sanding over the whole pipe. Um, I wanted to remove much of the old stain, but not all of it. And uh, I didn't want to disrupt the stampings any more than I had to, and hopefully you can see there that we were able to save Dunhill, uh, despite the sanding and filing here. So by being careful and by just taking off what we needed to, we, we, can, we have saved that Dunhill stamp. So, uh, oh, and I also topped the bowl a bit. Uh, you can see I didn't do a, a um, you know, really deep topping where all of this would be removed, all, all this charring, but that's okay. I want to maintain the shape of the bowl, and I just wanted to sort of make sure it was flat and get rid of the bulk of that uh, stuff that had built up on the, on the rim. So, we're ready to begin staining. And my staining is a slow process, and I know there's lots of ways to speed it up, but this is just the way I like to do it. So I'm going to do um, an undercoat, and then I'll have to let that dry overnight, sand it back, and then I will do an additional um, top coat of stain. Let that dry overnight, uh, lightly sand it, buff it, and then wax, and, and we're good to go. So it's, it's a, it's a two-step process with sanding in the middle. So this pipe, uh, I should have really talked about the, the stain before I sanded it, but I did, I did look at it and, you know, very carefully consider how I was going to restain it. Um, you might be able to see there's some red uh, tones coming through in here. There was definitely a yellow amber overcast, and it definitely had a lot of light brown uh, or tan. So I'm going to use one of my favorite uh, dyes for pipes, which is tan. Um, just it, it's just sort of a nice neutral uh, color that gives character but doesn't uh, look ridiculous. I'm going to mix in some ox blood, which is very, very red. So I'm probably going to do maybe one part, three parts tan to one part ox blood. And we'll apply that and let it dry and sand it. And then for the final stain, I've got some of this uh, really nice, uh, you're not going to be able to see it very well, but this is an amber yellow sort of uh, stain that I that I made uh, and this is just a mixture of various um, various other stains and you can you can play with these things yourself and come up with all sorts of recipes this is just one that has worked well for me in this kind of a situation um, so let me just make sure I get that lid on properly all right so first things first let's uh, let's deal with the overcoat is one of these guys and, and we'll need a couple of these guys so mixing mixing stains is um, not rocket science but it's also not something you want to do sloppily because it will affect the outcome of the pipe and you can make a big mess with it. So this is the tan dye and I don't know, I'm going to put maybe maybe 30 drops in there.
Okay, I went with 60. 60 ish drops of tan. Uh, the reason I did that was that it was becoming evident to me as I was counting the drops that we weren't going to have enough. Uh, I've already got stain all over my fingers. And now we'll go with the oxblood. So that was 60 drops, so I'm going to do 20 of the oxblood. Yeah, 19 is close enough. Okay. Uh, a stirrer of some sort. So I'm going to put it on with a pipe cleaner, but you can't. If I stir it with the pipe cleaner, it will all just get sucked up. So. Hopefully you can see that red coming through quite nicely. Okay, so loosen the stem a little bit, use it as a handle. Try to minimize the amount of stain that I get on the stem, although it doesn't really matter because it, it buffs off pretty quickly. And we're just going to soak up that stain. Do the rim first. This is a process that you kind of develop over time. Um, you know, I see people do it many different ways. There's lots of YouTube videos of pipe makers putting stain on. And some guys use a brush. And most guys use this um, bent pipe cleaner method. Some guys use the little cotton uh, swab thing that comes with the stain. Uh, some guys put on a very heavy single coat and then flash it off with, with a flame. Uh, I tend to put on a couple of thinner coats and let it just air dry. It does not take very long. You know, usually I set overnight and that is typically what I do just because that fits in well with my, my work schedule. You know, I, I can move on and do something else while this sits here and not have to think about it until the next day. Uh, but it, it only takes a few hours for this to be complete. Actually, it takes a few minutes for it to be completely dry. You can you can watch the stuff drying if you if you're patient enough. Um, but certainly, no more than a few hours to be perfectly confident that everything is sunk in. All right, I'm gonna just do one more around the rim. I have no idea what that chunk of something is in my in my stain there. That might have come off the pipe cleaner. One more around the rim and just make sure that this is all blended in. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just kind of went around this way. Just to make sure that we had everything blended in. And that's that, so... We will leave that to sit for a while and then uh, Come back and sand and buff and do it again. All right, so we now have um, the stain is completely uh, dried, all the alcohol is flashed off, and we're ready to go back to sanding. So, first thing I'm going to do is reseat the stem, make sure that it's clocked properly, and I do that just because I don't want to round over any of the edges as we're sanding. Uh, so we'll keep the stem on. You know, the stem's going to have to be polished up anyway. So well, a few sanding scratches aren't going to be a problem. And we'll begin just removing what we've put on there, uh, starting with 220 grit. And I will progress this through to 800. This is a slow process at first, but as we go to the higher grits, it becomes a bit easier. And you can see the, the idea is that we're removing 
much of the stain, but the, the grain is still going to be holding some of that stain. So hopefully you can see that from what we've done so far. And then for the, you know, for, for the top, we'll again use this little nail board trick and just come in like that. That's about the extent that we're going to sand this. So uh, I will do this with the 200 grit, uh, 220 grit rather, and then we will work our way up to 800. And I'll bring you back when we're ready to put on the next coat of stain. Well, after much sanding and some buffing, uh, this is what we're left with. It's looking pretty good, I think. And it is time to put on the top coat of stain. Back the stem off a little bit. Again, this is a mix. Um, it's, I'm not trying to hide what it is. I just don't know that you guys are going to have the same components that I put in here. But it's basically alcohol and some vintage amber, which is a um, a luthier stain that I get from Stuart McDonald. Uh, I don't know if it's actually only for luthiers, but that's the um, the name that I bought it under. And then there's some. Uh, canary yellow uh, which just helps bring out some of those yellow highlights and uh, like I said I, I, I like this it's uh, it's looked really good on a couple of pipes that I've done and we're gonna go ahead and put it on here and I think this will be pretty close to the the original stain when we're done so we may not have picked up as much of that red as I wanted but it, it's there and I think this will be suiting to the pipe. Now this layer, um, I'm not going to do a lot of sanding on. I will take some of the high grit, the 800 grit, and just rub it over just to get like any loose stain off. And then I will buff. And I'm going to do the buffing and waxing off screen. I hope I haven't had that out of shot the whole time. Well, I'll put the second coat on in shot. Yeah, so the, the trick with staining, if there is a trick, is to realize that a lot of what you're putting on is not getting into the wood, but just sitting on the surface. And you don't want that because it's just going to come off when the person handles the pipe. You know, some carnauba wax can protect it for a little while, but eventually it will come off, especially as the pipe heats up. So the goal is to remove the loose stain and just leave what has actually uh, sunk into the wood and bound to the wood. All right, so we'll let that go for a while, uh, just to make sure that the stain is, is completely uh, flashed off while the alcohol is gone and it's nice and dry. And then I will do the buffing and waxing, and I'll bring you back for the finished pipe. Well, folks, we have ourselves a finished pipe here, all nice and shiny and buffed up. So the finish um, came out pretty good. I would have probably liked it to be a little bit redder, but it looks good on the pipe, I think. So I'm happy with that. Uh, maybe next time I try that combination, I'll double up the red and see what that does. The problem with that ox blood is that it can be very, very red, almost like a cherry red. So you got to be careful with it. Uh, stem is fitting good. No, no light passing through the uh, the junction between the stem and the shank. It's squeaky fit. Uh, not not super tight, but tight enough. And it lines up really nicely when the stem is clocked correctly, which is good. There's no uh, no ridges around here. Uh, got rid of that extra chin that was on here for some reason. And that's a nice, I won't, I won't say perfectly uh, rounded chin, but, but better than what it was. And of course, the uh, the big issue on this one was the crack. And I'm hoping 
but you will be able to see that, you know, it's not invisible, but it's fortunate that it was in this sort of patch of dark uh, green. Uh, the, yeah, the crag is definitely there. You can see it from the top quite clearly. Uh, on the inside, it, it I should have mentioned this when the uh, when, I, when I was showing the crack, but it didn't just split like this, but it actually split like this, which again to me suggests that this was a drying issue. So the inner uh, wall, uh, the crack on the inner wall is actually more of a hairline crack. Uh, so I was able to force the epoxy down in there, but there's very little, if any, epoxy in the tobacco chamber. So I was able to just sand that. I don't think we need a bowl coating or anything. It is smooth, and uh, it, it's just being that high up on the pipe, it's really not going to be an issue in terms of the epoxy heating up or anything. Uh, so yeah, I think we got a, uh, got a reasonable repair to that. And uh, basically we took this pipe and not only made it look pretty, but we got it smoke, uh, smokable. So I'm going to get this in the mail back to the owner, and I hope he enjoys this pipe for many years to come. I hope you enjoyed this video series, and if you'd like to see future video series, please click that subscribe button, like and comment on this one. I always enjoy your comments. And until the next uh, series comes along, I'll look forward to talking to you all again real soon. Take care, guys.